yeah in this uh, session let's get uh, started with our uh, case study for uh, doing the modeling of the project so as we discuss the first stage is collecting all the assumptions associated with the project in the case study document that is uh, circulated to you we see that these are some of the assumptions i have broadly classified them as project assumptions work completion related assumptions the macroeconomic assumptions financing assumptions depreciation assumptions tax assumptions construction cost assumptions other construction cost assumptions revenue and operating and maintenance cost assumptions and probably uh, wherever required some conversion related so if you think through the various uh, assumptions or various numbers that are given as a part of your uh, project uh, case document it could be coming either from facilities agreement or from concession agreement or uh, or uh, from epc contract agreement or from various uh, sources different kinds of uh, numbers coming from different uh, sources all of them are captured as a part of your assumptions document so this assumption sheet just to quickly summarize the case we are assuming some start date for the project as per the case we have seen that it's a 2 year construction period 31 year operations period and uh, the project is to develop Uh, a, a bus terminus in an area of 55 acres of land wherein the market value of the land is 150 lakhs per acre or sometimes 1.5 crores per acre and with an annual lease rental of 1.2% per year uh, with the lease rentals growing at the rate of 5% every year and uh, also 50% of the lease uh, of the annual rental being kept as a lease deposit again every project will have different set of assumptions you may say that uh, yeah lease is going to lease rental is going to be constant over the period of the lease which means you could have put a number zero here so we have to visualize what all could change if at all my contract is saying that lease values are going to be constant for the entire leasing period it's as good as saying put a zero there if at all they are going to increase at certain rate you have to replace it by some other number and in immediately it should reflect in all the numbers getting auto updated similarly as a part of work completion especially the construction phase i am assuming that 40% of the construction work will be over in a uh, in the first year and 60% in the second what if this gets delayed by one more year instead of 2 years what if it goes to 2 and a half years or 3 years i need to have all these kind of mechanisms which means i need to maintain each one of them as an assumption as a part of my financial model now using these uh, various assumptions we will be building our uh, financial model similarly macroeconomic wise i have looked at the inflation index being a, a static 5% for the entire period but if i have better numbers especially with respect uh, to the inflation for uh, different years for the next 33 years i could have very well uh, taken a, a time series based uh, assumption for inflation index similarly i am assuming that my revenues are expected to grow at the rate of 7% every year coming to the financing this project is expected to be financed at 60% debt and 40% equity and that debt i am planning to draw down over a two year period which means over the entire construction period at the rate of four drawdowns per year which means i am planning to do a drawdown on a quarterly basis and there is a moratorium uh, period as per the facilities agreement the moratorium period is nothing but uh, i don't need to pay the principal during the moratorium period the prince in, in general in a normal loan process once you have taken the loan the principal and the interest repayment will start right from the day you have taken the loan 
whereas when there is a moratorium period it's not mandatory uh, it, it it is uh, not required to pay the principal during that period only the interest is applicable for that uh, specific period and you are liable to pay only the interest whether you pay the interest or not it could be a separate uh, deal again but whenever we are talking about a word called moratorium period the principal repayment is not applicable for that period and we are saying that this entire loan has to be repaid in a 12 year period after that at the rate of 12 percent per year in case uh, during our operation space in any particular uh, year or a set of years we generate a cash surplus we can deposit that surplus at the rate of six uh, percent uh, per year and this there is a, a requirement uh, as a part of the case that uh, the bank is expecting the SPV to maintain a DSRA account which is nothing but debt service reserve account which is equivalent to the total amount of interest and principal 50% of the total amount of interest and principal that we are liable to pay within the next uh, six months. So six months or half of the annual interest and principal that needs to be paid in the next year has to be maintained as a part of uh, the DSRA account and that uh, DSRA account also fetches uh, interest so the interest on DSRA is uh, provided at uh, 6% and in case in any of the operating years there is a negative cash flow means we are falling short of cash in any of the years we can very well take an overdraft for that shorter period and uh, that overdraft can be taken at the rate of 14 percent these are some of the financing related assumptions that we have captured and if we see all these numbers are subjected to change so any of these numbers changing will have an impact on the profitability of the project and the overall value of the project so a financing model should help us to do these kind of uh, should capture all these kind of uh, assumptions and use all these assumptions in the formulas appropriately to understand the impact on the output based on our assumptions. Similarly, we have uh, captured the depreciation related assumptions. See uh, in our entire uh, uh, model or in our entire project we are saying uh, it, we can break it down into three major aspects the building and civil works the furniture and fixtures and plant and machinery we have assumed that uh, their proportions are 80 10 10 and uh, we have taken uh, the depreciations directly from uh, companies act wherein the straight line depreciations for these three are being captured at 3.34, 6.33 and 5.28 percent whereas the written down value method depreciations are captured at these percentages. We will see we need to use both of them especially while presenting a financial model we will be using the straight line depreciation but for computing uh, the tax we will be using the written down value method so both of them are definitely required for our building of the financial model and as far as the taxes are concerned we have very clearly identified that the corporate tax at this moment is around 34 percent but it may change over a period so we have to clearly uh, have it as a variable because what if it changes at different percentage a later date and we are talking about a minimum alternate tax when I am talking about uh, the mat uh, creating a tax uh, tax sheet I will talk about uh, the mat and the dividend distribution tax there these are the various forms of taxes that are incurred for us then similarly we are uh, also talking about uh, the construction cost based assumptions wherein uh, this particular project involves uh, development of some basic infrastructure and I am uh, assuming that it will cost me around 21.6 crores but yeah this itself could be a separate model because basic infrastructure itself could involve probably a development of some roads water lines street lights sewage various power backups various things 
so we could have a, a breakdown of each and every aspect and that itself could go as a separate uh, model and the output of that model can be taken as an input into this but yes i mean to simplify the things and to create an understanding of this i am assuming that all that calculation is taken somewhere else and uh, this is coming out as an input into this model similarly a parking area development is going to cost me this much the bus terminal area might cost me this much and developing some support facilities uh, like uh, offices and uh, administrative centers and hotels and some such kind of thing probably is going to cost me something around 7.68 crores along with this i am also assuming that uh, my project has a pre operative cost what is this pre operative cost see uh, before the operations actually begin this is a project which has a 2 year construction period so the operations of this uh, project which means my first rupee out of this project will come only from the third year onwards but for the first 2 years there is so much of operations cost probably i require an office for the first 2 years i require some staff for the first 2 years i require some power and uh, various other things for the first 2 years some office equipment and stationeries and various things are required some travel is required so there are so many costs that are incurred in the first 2 years before my revenues actually start flowing in so that particular cost is what i am calling as a pre operative cost so i am uh, i am finding out that the pre operative cost is around 10% of the total construction cost and uh, the project development cost there is something stamp duties are there it could be uh, some percentage of the lease rentals or some percentage of the market value of the land and similarly there is an upfront uh, premium probably i can pay to the consultant or uh, advisor or sometimes uh, as a part of the concession agreement it would be uh, mentioned that uh, there is an upfront premium that has to be paid to get this particular project it's not uh, a deposit kind of thing but it is a uh, it is uh, a kind of a cash outflow itself even that uh, amount i have to clearly figure it out similarly we have a registration charges in this case talking about 0.5% of the average lease rentals we are talking about uh, the insurance costs as well as uh, financing costs for the period so all these things are going as a part of our all these things are going as a part of our cost assumption so i have to take all these things as a part of my construction uh, cost for the typical project similarly once i am moving into my operation space i am talking about uh, the revenues so these are the various revenues that probably the concession agreement might be highlighting so i have just listed down some of them into the case there are uh, revenues uh, from parking so that itself could translate into a separate uh, big model okay how many are uh, two wheelers i am expecting what is the space for each two wheeler how much of space i have allocated for a two wheeler parking how many two wheelers are expected per day what is the turn around time all these things can be taken as separate variables to arrive at what is the parking revenue for the year but yeah i have simplified it in the case putting one some number under the expectation of uh, some utilization 100% utilization so if at all someone uh, thinks no it's not uh, 100% but 80% utilization itself then what could be the impact of the revenues so revenues from some bus terminal area revenue from hotel revenue from health center revenue from bank extension counter i'm expecting all these forms of uh, revenues revenues from advertising all these forms of revenues are going to uh, come up as per the current uh, prices i have done this uh, assumptions and similarly uh, the cost wise i am expecting that uh, i require this much for security people this much of cost for maintaining the bus terminal area every year for maintaining the parking areas the office space maintenance budget hotel maintenance uh, and i am expecting this uh, as the amcs for the way basic uh, infrastructures and lighting and whatever i am providing 
I am also looking at this much of uh, annual expense uh, for water bill based on the current price but it may grow at the rate of uh, inflation every year. Similarly, this is the power bill that is expected uh, per that uh, particular location. All these kind of things, whatever could result into revenue and operating expenses uh, on a yearly basis, they all have to get translated as assumptions into the model and using all these things as a base into various formulas, we would be creating our final full-fledged financial model, right? Once you are comfortable with these uh, assumptions, we can take them as uh, inputs to the building of uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, approach of step-by-step uh, uh, -step approach uh, towards uh, moving uh, towards the creation of a full-fledged successful financial model. Alright?